Florida has some of the most iconic animals on the planet. Of the state's 500 bird species, by far one of its most recognizable members is the American Flamingo. Despite this animal being one of the state's most iconic creatures, a lot of people are shocked when they realize just how rare these flamingos truly are. So why is Florida's most iconic bird so rare? And why is it that even someone like me, who goes out every single weekend, doing dumb stuff like this? still hasn't seen a flamingo in the wild. Well, you see, the answer to this mystery is quite complicated, so let's dive into it and answer once and for all what happened to Florida's flamingos. So if you haven't realized it already, the American flamingo is absolutely gorgeous. They stand up to 5 feet tall, and they get their iconic pink color from the algae and brine shrimp they consume. Unfortunately, this trait, which gives them their bright pink color, would inevitably be their downfall. While documentation remains sparse, it has been believed that flamingos have been breeding in the state for thousands of years, at least until very recently. And unlike other birds which nest in the trees, flamingos nest on the ground, where they will protect their eggs until they hatch. This just so happened to make them the perfect target for people wanting their plumage. People specifically wanted their feathers, cause back in the late 1800s, and early 1900s, people would make hats like these, which could have been sold legally for hundreds of dollars back in the day. Some of Florida's first American residents were actually bird hunters who would hunt these birds in addition to other species and sell their feathers to a lot of these hat making companies. Which, to be honest, I think we could all agree, these hats are kinda ugly anyway. So before you click off thinking this was a simple hunted to extinction story, you'd be mistaken, cause you see Florida still does have flamingos at least in sparse numbers, but not for the reason that you might expect. You see, things are about to get a little more complicated. Once air conditioning was properly invented, South Florida went from a nightmare swamp to every vacationer's paradise. And with that said change, lots of new millionaires decided to flood down to the state to take advantage of its tropical climate and soon-to-be booming economy. What people didn't realize was at the time, these millionaires didn't just bring down money, but also overpriced theme parks and tons of different exotic species, ranging from monkeys to all sorts of different birds. Peacocks, swamp hens, dozens of different parrot species, and most importantly, these flamingos were all brought to Florida and released by these millionaires. Most of these flamingos in particular were either escaped pets or roadside zoo escapes, though some were also probably released on purpose in order to add to Florida's touristy Caribbean vibe. Most of these flamingos were also of the American variety, which made for a very interesting argument of if we should even remove these flamingos, or if we should just consider them to be reintroduced natives to the state. The answer to this question gets even more complicated when you realize the fact that these records of flamingos breeding in the state of Florida still remain to be verified. So assuming that these flamingos aren't breeding in some secret place in Florida, which is still very possible, then where are these newer flamingos coming from? You see, American flamingos are a transient species. This means that they don't exactly have a well-defined migration pattern, nor do they spend their whole lives in one place like some other birds. Additionally, even though flamingos were hunted to near extinction in Florida, this was not the case throughout the American flamingos range, as they are still very much prevalent throughout some parts of the Caribbean and Mexico to this day. One flamingo, which was found solo in Florida, was actually tagged and was later found to have traveled all the way down to the Yucatan in Mexico, alongside some other flamingos, which it was likely trying to breed with. But this then raises the question of why did that flamingo travel all the way to Florida, only to go back down south to Mexico in the first place? Well, you see... Nobody knows, but we can come up with some good theories. Part of the reason why it's believed that the American flamingo is a transient species is at least in part due to the hurricane season. Unlike other birds which are small enough to seek shelter, flamingos are very large and delicate creatures, and because of this they usually need to fly far away from any sort of severe storms in order to ensure their survival. And in case you've been living under a rock and haven't figured this out already, the Caribbean along with its adjacent areas have a lot of storms. So by having these flamingos travel back and forth between multiple different areas, they are able to dodge these storms, and as a result, they often settle into new places, at least temporarily. 
though sometimes they will come back year after year to these places in order to feed. This would explain why some of Florida's last remaining flamingo flocks will vanish for months on end, only to return sometimes years later with the same amount of individuals present and usually in the same area. While this explanation does answer how the flamingos have been able to stay in Florida without the presence of an actual breeding population, this explanation still does not answer what happened to the original flamingos that were released decades ago into the Florida wilderness. Well, you see what happened to most of these flamingos isn't entirely known, but there are some exceptions to this, like the flamingos of Hialeah. This wild flock of flamingos was introduced back in the 1930s and is currently the only known breeding population of flamingos in the state of Florida. These flamingos originally came from Cuba, but were purposely released from captivity back in the 1930s, and they've been breeding in Hialeah ever since. Yet, they don't exactly breed in a flamingo's traditional habitat. Because these flamingos are the descendants of captive individuals, they aren't exactly that bothered by people, and because of that, they spend most of their time inside of the Hialeah racetrack of all places, where they're surrounded by tons of people and also horses, which in a strange sort of way does help keep them protected from predators. But they will also occasionally venture out, even going inside of the city of Miami itself. This on top of the presence of other escaped individuals, some of which would end up inevitably joining this flock, is a large part of why flamingos are often seen as Florida's number one mascot. As let's face it, pictures like these of escaped flamingos with Miami in the backdrop are absolutely stunning. In a lot of ways, pictures like these are the perfect advertisement to get people to go to the state. Tragically, because a lot of these flamingos aren't exactly feeding on the same prey that they would if they were naturally wild, a lot of them lack the truly vibrant pink colors that are associated with their species. Regardless, they are still flamingos, and they still are an incredibly fascinating part of Florida's history. Because of all these different releases and the fact that flamingos could live up to 50 years, the flamingos that have been released primarily from the Miami-Dade area have, against all odds, managed to become Florida's mascots, with almost every single escaped individual acting as the perfect model. As these birds can't be found anywhere else in the US, they essentially act as the perfect drawing for both tourists and future residents alike, at least for the time. Now in modern day, unfortunately most of Florida's residents don't exactly care or simply aren't fascinated with Florida's wildlife anymore. And since most of Florida's wild flamingos weren't able to find breeding partners, unless they joined the Hialeah flock or transient flocks just visiting from other nations, Florida's flamingos would inevitably end up disappearing again, with resident flamingos and their natural habitat being practically non-existent, and only transient flamingos visiting on the occasion in some of the most remote parts of the state where people almost never go. Yet, in spite of how incredibly rare these birds are now throughout the state, they're like legacy still carries on throughout the media in which they could be found in. Whether that be video games, postcards, or even just books, these flamingos still act as a sort of symbol of the state, whether they're commonly found in it or not. Additionally, Florida also has plenty of other incredibly amazing birds which are unfortunately ignored, such as the spoonbill, sandhill crane, and even its invasive parrots, some of which have inevitably started to replace the flamingo as a symbol of Florida's wildlife. Sadly, with everything from rock mines to immigrant camps being built in the Everglades, to bear hunts and shark diving bans being enacted or proposed throughout the state, Florida's wildlife is in a worse position than it ever has been before. So please, no matter where you live, try to appreciate and respect the wildlife that's still left in your area, so they don't inevitably disappear or become rare, like Florida's most iconic bird, the flamingo. If these birds ever will recover in the state remains to be seen, but with multiple wild flowers, flocks continuously visiting the state, I'd say it's only a matter of time before these birds ideally come back, assuming us humans don't screw everything up before then. So if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Please feel free to like and subscribe. I try to make animal mini documentaries every single week, and YouTube is my main source of income. Plus, my next video idea is an absolute banger, so please do what I told you to do, and I'll see you real soon. Goodbye.